I'll play d4, d5. Mm. Knight c3. He's actually following the principles. Knight f6. All right. So it looks like my opponent is doing well so far. Let me just develop a pieces, right? Bishop f5. Get the bishop out of the stuff before you play e6. See, now my bishop is not sad anymore. It's important to get your bishop out of the stuff. If your bishop was inside the stuff, then the, the best way to play would be b6 and bishop b7. But first, our priority is to castle. And to castle, we need to play e6 followed by bishop e7 and castle. So as black, you should really think about this setup. e6, d5, knight here, and then castle. Of course, we can't castle in check. So uh, a check that could be easily blocked, it's just um, kind of a waste of time for the opponent. Mm. Sure, model games. You, you can you can play. You can challenge me for a game after. Um, so he's checking, and it's we just blocking. So he just spend a tempo. But this setup, you see, with black, if you do this as black, um, most of the times you're gonna survive um, a long time, which takes here. Bishop d3. Okay, so he's trying to double my pawns. Um, if I want, I can actually let this happen. I'll tell you why it's not such a bad idea, all right? I'll let him double my pawns, but I'm con getting control over the center here. I'm getting open file, so I don't really mind if he takes my bishop. And now, um, I'm going to follow my opening strategy, which is to develop all of my minor pieces. So knight should go to d7. And now, my rooks should be active, but unfortunately, there are no open files. So if there are no open files, let's, uh, we should create an open file. So if I play this though, then he's going to take my, my bishop and then I lose a pawn. So we can't do that yet. Mm. He's planning to play e4, I think. So we can let him play e4 and then think about it. Another move is to, to see if we can attack some of his weaknesses. So queen b6 comes to mind. So these are some of the moves I'm thinking about. Okay, let's play queen b6. Attack this pawn. Uh, <laughs> no, no dates today. It is the, yeah, ain't no sunshine. Yeah, welcome all the new people. Rook B1, okay. So I could put my rook here in case he takes my bishop. I can also put my rook here in case he plays E4. I'm thinking which is the best, better way. I think I'll play rook d8. I have a feeling that he's going to play e4. Yeah, he plays e4. Okay, I can't let the pawn come too far, so let's take this. He takes with a knight. I got to say, my opponent is playing really well so far. Um, hmm. All right, so as you can see, this, this pawn is really vulnerable. I wonder if I can capture this pawn right now. If I take the pawn, he takes back. I take with the queen. And my queen is unprotected, but I don't see a way for him to take advantage of it, right? No, I don't see it. I think it's safe. It's safe. Let's do it. We can tra take this person right here. That's a central pawn. One pawn in the middle, it's worth a lot, you know? Mm. You want a pawn. So he takes the, the bishop, I take back, so I'm up a pawn. And normally, if these two pieces were in there, he would have a check. And then I would lose my queen. But it's going to be hard to remove these two guys. Yeah, I'm matching the board today. <laughs> he plays knight g5. Um, okay, if I trade the bishops off, he doesn't have any more tricks, and I will ruin his pawn structure. 
Yeah, so now um, his pawn is isolated. Time to gang up on this guy. So knight f6 gangs up on the pawn. Knight c5 gangs up on the pawn. I like... Um, I like knight f6 as because it stops queen h5. But knight c5 really doubles down on the pawn. Triples down on the pawn. Hmm. I'm not sure which is better. Because my rook is open, right? Um, that's when knight f6 opens up his pawn. So if I go knight f6, he's going to go rook e3, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go knight c5. Triple attack. If he goes queen h5, threatening checkmate, I'm just going to go h6. Okay, he doesn't play queen h5. Uh, so I'm going to win another pawn. Yeah, it's a new 10-minute speedrun. It's a rapid speedrun. Munch, munch. So I'm up a pawn. So the clinical way is to trade more pieces. The clinical way is to trade more pieces. Um, let's see. I can trade everything. I wonder if there is a better way though. I see a tactic. Okay, let's do the tactic. I take the queen, okay. And then I'm going to go knight d3. And then I tag the rook and the pawn. Okay. Why am I speaking so quietly? Then he goes here. Then I take this pawn. And I say, oh no, my knight. But then he takes my rook. I take his rook back. He takes my knight. Then I go rook d1 checkmate. That's the plan. He may be listening on stream. I don't know. He has to click my profile to find out I'm, I'm speedrunning. You know? So the plan is to go... If he goes here as well, I'll, I'll say this and say, Oh no, my... Oh no, my... You know, knight. Okay, he doesn't do either of them. So I'm just going to take this. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm up three pawns. Yeah, back rank mates uh, coming soon. Takes, takes. And now we have a back rank mate threat. And now even if he defends it with rook c1, I can actually still trade. So his best move is probably to play g3. Or g4. A little bit more weakening. Okay. I don't want to... Hold on to more material. I want to trade as fast as possible. So the best thing to do when you're up material is to reduce the resistance of the opponent. So guys, what do you think in this position, the best move for black to reduce the resistance? Reduce counterplay. The more pieces they have, the more counterplay they have, right? The rook is going to attack my pawns and stuff. Yes. So I see that rook d3 attacks these two guys. And yeah, this is how you reduce counterplay, by trading off the, the rooks. So if, if he wants to keep some play, he should play rook c2. Then I would trade, take this knight and take the knight, make a trade. But I'm still simplifying. If he takes here, it's lit literally over, uh, immediately over. Uh, but I suspect he's going to take my rook, right? He doesn't do that. Uh, he's offering a trade. So I will take the rook. And now uh, we, we go to the easy part. What is the fastest winning plan for black here, guys? What is the fastest winning plan in the end game? Make a pass pawn. That is correct, model gamers. A5. B5. Push him, baby. Push him, baby. Push him, baby. Push him, baby. All right, he plays this move. He wants to stop me from playing B5 because then he takes my pawn. So you know what we did? Push him, baby, again to the knight. This knight doesn't deserve to stay in the middle of the board. It's a good spot. So we're going to chase him back. He plays here. I can push, but then he comes back. So let's just play f6. Restrain. 
Restrain the Knight. Uh, this is why I, I love Center Pawns. You see, the Central Pawns really do a great job of restraining um, the opponent's pieces. Right? They really do. Um, yeah, they restrain. I love the Center Pawns. All right, now we're going to go with our plan of A4. Thank you so much, Rogerst. Awesome. This is going to go on YouTube, by the way. Uh, A4 time. Uh, thanks so much. And now he takes, takes. He's going to try to block with knight B1. But my knight is going to go to C4 and prop up the pawn, right? So knight B1, knight C4, then A3, A2. The knight's worst enemy is a rook pawn. Do you guys know why the knight's worst enemy is a rook pawn? The knight, when it goes to, to find the rook pawn, it takes a lot of time, number one. Number two, uh, that's a free pawn, but I mean, I can just go with my plan. The knight takes a long time to get to the, the rook pawn, and, and when it's there, it's so passive, you know? Okay, now see? Now the, now the pawn has a double attack. I'm threatening to make a queen and take the knight. Uh, he gives me a free knight, I'll just queen, and it's a double attack now. We're converting. Rook pawn is the pawn that's in front of the rook model gamer, so these two pawns are the rook pawn. Okay, our opponent resigned. We gained 100 points for this victory. So what was the mistake? He actually played quite well. He actually played quite well in the opening. I suspect he learned this opening from a video um, video game, not video game, <laughs> uh, YouTube video. Uh, is that a chess video game? I suspect he learned this opening from a YouTube video um, or something like that. Uh, Chess Master 8. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Fortnite. Yeah, I'm an Arcanog. So, like, he played really well until here. His mistake was giving up the this pawn. So, I don't think he should have played e4. He should not have played e4. Maybe he needed to prepare a little bit. Um, maybe I would have taken the bishop, actually, in hindsight, right? And here he has to play the, um, the maneuvering game. So let's ask ourselves in this position, which of white's pieces need the most help? Let's flip the board. Which white's piece needs most help? This one is okay. It's controlling good squares. This one can't go anywhere. Ah. Maybe I need to move this knight somewhere better. How about knight e2, knight f4? There we go. Knight a4, it's pretty bad there, right? Knight e2 is nice. And then knight here, or knight here, attack this pawn, you see? And then I attack this pawn. And then you can think, okay, uh, let's play some move. All right, attacking the pawn. All right, which, which piece needs help now? The rooks, okay. How about I try to open a file? Hmm... So I could play something like queen d3, followed by c4, or b3, c4. Just need to open up avenues for my pieces, right? And this is how the game would go, essentially. Position is around equal. Maybe black's a tiny bit better, because black has a bit more open line for his rook, and it, knight and bishop is usually a better combination than knight and knight. Um, but this would have been much better for the opponent, but instead he played this hasty move e4, uh, and then he lost a pawn, right? That's why he lost. This was a game of attrition. I just slowly started grabbing things when I can, right? Grab, 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 grab this, grab that, grab this, grab a pawn. And then um, pretty much that's what happened, right? When you're famous, they let you do it, you know? Right? When you're famous? Yeah. So you just grab the pawn. And then you grab another one and you can, you know, this one too. Weak pawns. Yeah. When you're famous, they let you do it. Um it's actually an interesting thing. One of the one of the thing um the best target is to go after your opponent's pawns. Pawns are helpless things, you know? So in your games you can start to see which pawns can I target. All right. Okay, 